this is the display of a new device that I have uh, just received, bought it from Banggood, we'll talk more about that in a minute. What you see at the top is a frequency sweep from 50 megahertz on the left to 4.4 gigahertz on the right. And that may give you a clue to what this uh, device is. It's called a 35-4400M Spectrum Analyzer with Tracking Generator. Now, uh, it also has the designation, I think it's LTDZ. I'll show you uh, precisely in a little bit. But what I wanted to do was to show what is a sweep using the tracking generator. And notice that there are some dips. Now, this is not, by the way, I paid $30 for this. It took about 20 days to get here from, from China. And it's, it's certainly not lab test equipment or anything like that. But it, it does have some capabilities that can be very useful, I believe. Now, like I, like I say in all my videos, I don't have any connection with any of these companies. I paid for this. Uh, I don't get any, any payment. I don't even have commercials on my channel. So this is just my own personal opinion. And the opinion is that certainly it's worth having one of these devices. So let's take a look at the device itself and the setup that produced this particular uh, trace. Now notice this is 10 dB down and the uh, at the low point here, I think it is, well it says that the, that, it, that the max is plus 3 dB. And let me put a uh, marker there and see that says it's minus 8.75 dB so let's say down minus 9 or minus 10 dB at that point. Now a lab quality uh, spectrum analyzer with a lab quality tracking generator carefully normalized of course wouldn't have that much of a variation but some people have had some trouble getting this device to work. So first let me show you the device and then show you a few things you need to know to get it to work. And then we'll run a uh, uh, maybe an attenuator or a filter uh, using this device and see what kind of results we get. So here is the board. You notice at the top it says 35 dash 4400M Heterodyne Spectrum Analyzer Onboard Tracking Source. The blinking red LED indicates that the uh, unit is connected to the computer. There's a little switch right here and when you press it, it's a toggle so one press turns on, one press turns off. And you notice a little blue light that went off. That blue light shows that the tracking source or the tracking generator is on. So uh, when you're doing a, uh, an S21 measurement, in other words, a transmission measurement through something, you need the tracking generator on. This device also works as a uh, spectrum analyzer. Now, when it gets out in the 3 gigahertz and beyond range, uh, it becomes a little iffy. But I have found that this is actually a pretty good device, even over the full 4400 uh, megahertz range or 4.4 gigahertz range. So what do we have hooked up here? Well. Let me slide this to the left. There you see at the top is the RF out and at the bottom is the RF in. And you see a couple of cables coming over to just a through, uh, SMA through connector. So now let's, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
and we're going to replace this through connector with a little circuit that I built uh, some time ago when I was trying to uh, to design a uh, or to use a noise source or create a noise source for uh, use with spectrum analyzers it's it's just a it's just something that uh, we're going to put in place of the uh, through connector just because it has a frequency response and, and we'll look at that okay here is the device now what I'm going to do is turn on the tracking generator see the little blue LED comes on and then I'm going to run a scan but before I do I'm going to reposition the camera so that we can see the display okay now you can see the display and I'm going to run another single sweep what you see on the screen is what we had from earlier and this is the device that you see and uh, yeah it does have this characteristic what I was trying to do was to attenuate low frequency signals and have it run on up the, uh, the truth is I designed this so that it was only intended to go to 3 uh, gigahertz uh, but the idea was that I wanted a sloping uh, and this is a very simple circuit but ideally it would have been a slope that started at about 30 dB or 25 dB down and went to 0 dB at uh, 3 gigahertz and the purpose of that was to was to offset the tendency of a noise generator to generate most of its energy at the low frequencies and the energy goes down so it was intended as a compensator but I'm only using it here to illustrate now there is some kind of uh, loss that uh, is very, appears to be very frequency sensitive I'm not going to investigate that I'm really just looking at this device but what you can see is this can be a very useful uh, tool for getting the general characteristics of RF devices now as I said it can also be used as a spectrum analyzer but I am going to focus on using it uh, as a transmission measurement uh, device in other words tracking generator into a spectrum analyzer across a broad range of frequencies now a lot of people uh, who have uh, well I should say there's a few videos on YouTube and it seems like everyone has trouble getting this thing to work and some of the people when they do get it to work it doesn't seem to work as well as mine does and I don't know if that's because I got a good one or if that's because I followed the instructions <laughs> very carefully and we'll talk about that in a minute now I'm going to go about this a, a little bit backward I'm now just just looking uh, above this is that is the frequency uh, display or the, the span or scan display but below it is the control panel for this device and I think the place where most people uh, have trouble setting this up at least the two or three that I saw is when you go to the settings and you come down here to options you'll notice that you get uh, a series of uh, boxes to fill things in and at the top is the start frequency and a, and a stop frequency and those are just default values this is the calibration file by the way and but if you look down here one thing that was definitely needed to be changed on mine is I had to set the max sweep to 5 gigahertz and turn on the 10x let me uh, click on this and you'll see that you can select how much the frequency multiplier is I had to set that to 10 to get my unit to go all the way to 4.4 gigahertz 
Now, in addition to that, I also had to, well, I had to set the COM port. You see right here is the, uh, is the COM port. And in my case, uh, it was COM16, and uh, in a minute I'll show you the software uh, that you have to download and, and run. And, and that uh, includes a USB to serial uh, driver. And then up here I set the start frequency and stop frequency, these are the defaults, to 35 megahertz at the low end and 5 gigahertz at the top end. And then I clicked on OK. Then I was able to scan the full 4.4 gigahertz range. So let me show you the software setup. And by the way, let me let me close this and show you the what the software looks like. It's this uh, symbol right here. This is the software you want to you want to download. Well, it's not going to focus now, apparently. There we are. It's called Win NWT4.EN. And that is the software that I downloaded from the Banggood site. But when you download it, it has a string of Chinese characters at the end, in other words, right before the dot, uh, there's a string of Chinese characters. You have to remove those Chinese characters. If you don't remove them, it tries to look for that directory, that is a directory with those Chinese character names. And of course, if you're running a machine that is not a Chinese character machine, it won't find it. So you'll get frustrated thinking this thing won't work. But if you just remove those Chinese characters, it will find the right directory and install correctly. And you have to install two pieces of software. One is this WinNT4, uh, uh, NWT4, and the other is a uh, driver for the USB to serial port. So here is the Banggood uh, website. Now, this $45 is about $15 more than I paid. I paid uh, $30 plus, uh, I think, $2 shipping or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to scroll down here. If you uh, come down to where it says Instructions for Use, click here to open. And you click on that, you'll get this uh, wiki. And if you scroll down in the wiki, you'll find that this is where you get the software. It's uh, got the name of the device in the middle here, LT, DZ, and this one says 36, uh, I'm sorry, 35-4400M, uh, and a bunch of digits in front of it. But then it says .RAR, which of course is a condensed archive that you need uh, a program that will open or an RAR file. Once you open that, you get uh, a couple of uh, programs, one of which is the, the software I was just running, and the other, as I said, is the, uh, the driver for the USB to serial conversion. Here is a lot of instructions, and I read uh, these, and they were helpful. Uh, the uh, at any rate, th there's a lot here to read, and I've been through it two or three times. It's uh, it. Uh, shows you how to calibrate and so on. And by the way, I think that's something that other people maybe have trouble with. You need uh, a reasonably good attenuator. Uh, 
I used this uh, HP uh, 355D, but as they point out, you can get a uh, a cheaper one. You need a 40 dB and a and a 10 dB. You can get 40 dB by hooking the 10 with 30 on this device, and it says this device is available on uh, uh, the Banggood site as well. So if you if if you want to save a little shipping, you might want to order one of those along with it because it will come in handy not only for calibration but also especially if you're going to be working with active devices, you're going to have to knock down their their level for this device to work with them. And so I would suggest that you get an attenuator. You need a 40 dB attenuator and a 10 dB attenuator to do the calibration. So at any rate, I hope that will help uh, people who might be looking for this device. Once again, it's called the LTDZ 35M-4400M Heterodyne Spectrum Analyzer. And I found that it works pretty well. This is a Windows 7 computer. I've also run it on a Windows 10 computer. And according to the wiki, there also is a... Uh, uh, a Mac version, and I think maybe even let's see if it says well, maybe not. Uh, might be an Android version too, but at any rate, I found it to be a pretty good piece of equipment for thirty dollars, and I'm going to be using it. Uh, but I thought I might put this up for those people that are thinking about getting one of these so that you'll know that you do have to go through a few steps. Of course, downloading the software, is that's pretty common these days. So you do have to have a uh, computer that will run. I think it works on some other Windows systems, but I know it works on 7 and 10. And once you download the software, you have to unarchive it and then you have to remove the Chinese characters and run the, the two programs, one of which sets up the USB to serial and the other of which is the program you saw at the very beginning. So, I hope you have enjoyed this. If you order one of these, I hope you have good luck with it. I have so far. But more important, stay safe and have a nice day.